Now, following on with a little theme I've got going on at the moment, I'm going to make some Balkan flatbreads. Now, flatbreads are found sort of throughout the world. Um, this is a, a version with yeast, like some are. Okay, um, and it's do you normally flatbreads are cooked at a high temperature to give you that nice sort of golden sort of outer, if you like, crust if you like. Um, and it's usually just three ingredients, flour, water, and yeast. Um, sorry, and salt, not necessarily yeast. Um, but we, for this recipe, we're gonna be using flour, water, some yeast, some salt, but we're also gonna be adding a little bit of lard. Now, if you don't wanna use lard, you can use corn oil or something like that instead. And, like I say, a flatbread's really just a flatbread. Some are leavened, some unleavened. We're going for a leavened version. Okay, so in here, now I'm only going to make about three uh, of these particular Balkan flatbreads. The piña, I think it's pronounced. Um, so I've only got a small amount of everything. So I've got 250 grams of sort of plain flour. Um, it doesn't have to be bread flour. And what I'm going to do is I'm just making a little well in the middle. And into that, I'm going to sprinkle five grams of dried active yeast. And then I've got 180 grams of lukewarm water. And I'm just going to pour that into that middle. And we're not going to do any mixing at this stage. Um, we're just going to essentially allow that yeast to activate. So we're just going to put that to one side for about five to ten minutes. So like I was saying, flatbread found all over the place. Um, in um, sort of Middle East, pita bread, um, Asia, naan bread, uh, India, chapatis. Um, and like I said, in the Balkans, like Bosnia, Montenegro, Serbia, those sort of places, they make this the penya. Now, it's very popular, particularly at sort of taking picnics, but also with a sort of traditional kebab stroke sausage uh, chavapis. Okay, so I'm just going to let this sit there. And like I say, all you're going to need else is you're going to need um, five grams of salt and 15 grams of lard or oil. And obviously a little bit of flour for when we come to do the kneading and also when we go to put it in the oven. Uh, but the oven is a little, at least an hour off yet. The yeast has started to activate, it's been bubbling away a little bit in the middle. So what we're going to do now is I'm now just going to mix all this together. Now you could do this in a stand mixer. The quantity I'm using here um, will be a little bit lost in there. Um, so what we're going to do is just mix this together, kneading it gently just to get all that water and yeast mixed into it. And then I'm going to add that salt. Just checking it, just thinking, had I missed something? So it's quite sticky at the moment. So here goes that salt, and I'm just going to knead that through. And I'm going to knead it for about five to ten minutes. Like I say, if you were making double the amount, um, then you could do this with a dough hook and just keep going until that salt is all nicely mixed into it. At this point, I'm now going to add in that lard. And again, we just want to carry on kneading this for about another five minutes. But certainly, until we're happy that all that lard has been mixed through and combined in. At which point, just going to sort of cover it over in this bowl. And we're then going to let it sit there and prove for anything from 40 minutes up to an hour. We're, we are looking the sort of classic doubling in size. Now this is starting 
that well mainly because of that lather but it's starting to feel smoother um, and that's what you want with your kneading till it all starts coming nice and smooth um, and you've got all that lard incorporated. Add an hour and you can see that's significantly risen so I'm just going to add a little bit of flour uh, you can use semolina flour if you like um, less absorbent and therefore doesn't affect the dough but what we do is I'm just going to tip that out onto that and now the quantity I've made essentially is for three flatbreads if you'll make them to the standard size as it were however um, I'm going to make four so I've just roughly sort of shaped that so that I can just divide that up into four and what I want to do is just shape them round in a little ball and we're just going to then place that onto the floured surface and we're going to leave that again to rise um, about 10 minutes just to prove a little bit longer they've had a little rest in time so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to take each one and I might just have to put another little bit of flour down there I think and we're just going to make it out until probably about four inches round and then put it onto a floured baking sheet and we're then going to let them rest for another 10 to 15 minutes Ooh, a bit of salt in there I use quite coarse salt which possibly wasn't the best thing to do um, if we're going to use coarse salt like that probably best well it's more like a stone to be honest um, it's probably best to uh, mix it in with the water or some of the water so dissolve it and then obviously it will incorporate in a lot better so like I say I'm going to just do that leave it on here now the oven's on at 250 um, we cook this in a hot oven before we put these in the oven I'm going to take you can use the back of a knife but the ruler I've got is just as good we want a dull blade all we're going to do is we're going to lightly press it into the flatbreads to create a bit of a mesh. Part of the reason for that, although this, you have to watch this dough, it's quite soft. Some of these are actually going a bit deeper than I really want. Um, normally quite often what happens when you cook it it will puff up and we don't really want that so that should help prevent that so now this is going to go in the oven for about eight minutes possibly a few minutes longer until they've started to go golden brown so the middle shelf 250 um, degrees celsius oven eight minutes and then we'll check on them if we time it will actually start i'm stuck completely we're going to do a little misting with water And then I'm just going to put some kitchen towel over the top and we'll let them cool but that way that should keep the outer crust a little bit softer um, and then they're best eaten warm or you can just eat them at room temperature but this will at least help soften up that crust so there you go there is your Balkan flatbread that peanut